Good afternoon. Yeah, I believe we've Good got, afternoon. Look at that. We've got IQ and we've got Dan and uh, hopefully we have Steven Anderson or Madison Snow, whichever one it is, uh, here in a few moments. <laughs> and we will uh, we will see what happens and uh, we will talk about the bicycle book here at the uh, here at the top of the segment here and um, Dan, I must lo- I must see your shirt. I'm always interested in your shirts. <laughs> Dan's a fashion plate, everybody. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that is awesome. Come on, Dan, let me see your shirt. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. God. He's traveling today, I IQ. Tell you, the colors he has are bright. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Yellow, green, blue, doesn't matter. Bright. He's yeah. always bright. That's good. That's good. I I I love the fact that IQ Al Rizzoli pays attention to Dan's shirts. I think. Did you? Do you know the you, IQ? Do you know the story about the Queen when she was asked why did she always wear such bright colors? Well, what what she did said? she say? So I would stand out, so people would just see where I am. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> That's great. So are they shut are they shut down London yet on this new virus? No, not yet. But they're not Anyways. allowing anybody from uh, Africa, obviously. But they're being stupid because it's a very, very mild version. While everybody is freaking out. Not not everybody, the media is freaking people out, as usual. Well, the problem know. is that they're yeah, telling sorry. us that it's they're telling us that it's a um, uh, mild version, but it has been around long enough to know for sure that in fact it truly is. That's that's the unknown. It's, it hasn't well, been around. Look, the Africans themselves are saying it's mild. So if the Africans are saying it's mild, it really must be mild. Yeah, and I think they're using. Uh, Kerkolaquin, or however you pronounce it, uh, yeah, yeah, they're using yeah. the one, the one that they con- the, the one they condemned uh, t- Trump with. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. absolutely. Always, yeah, and, always. And, Trump went ahead. Oh. As somebody said recently that India has four times the population of the United States, and they have not had four times the the cases or four times the deaths. And they have been using chloroquine uh, from the from the outset because they couldn't get the vaccines. Because it's a cheaper element. Of you, obviously, it's cheap compared right. to the vaccine. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I'm. Uh, are we still waiting on our guest? We are still waiting on our guest. I, I think what we're going to do is we're just going to do our segment here. And if they join us, that's awesome. If they don't, fine. Then we if will, they don't, that's also we fine. We will do okay. our thing. Um, I had Larry Clayman on a show earlier this week. And Larry told me that the United States has no justice system. And I had to look at the phone because I was like thinking, am I speaking to IQ Al Rizzoli? <laughs> He's telling the truth. The truth always hurts. This is why Muslims don't want to hear the truth. That's why leftists don't want to hear the truth. It hurts them. Clayton yeah. is telling the truth. You have no justice. You should know that. I mean, I don't have to tell you honestly, JJ. You should know that. <laughs> no, I... I... It is, uh, he was saying that uh, him and a few folks are going to be indicting Hunter Biden here very soon. Um, Dan, do, do, do you think that, that Republicans should just leave this Hunter Biden thing alone, or do you think we should go ahead and continue this on out? Uh, I do not think we should ever leave anything alone when somebody has broken the law. Yes. Regardless of, the, regardless of their party affiliation. They broke the law. They need to be. They need to be prosecuted. They need to get their day in court. But if they broke the law, and it's been proven that they broke the law, then they got to do the time. Yeah. Period. Just, just know. Uh, I'm, I'm finishing up a book that I highly recommend to both of you, and that's the the new um, Peter Navarro book on Trump time. And I can't tell you how much I've learned about how 
how much more I'm impressed with what Donald Trump was able to accomplish when you get an insight from him on the, the impact of the deep state in the executive office of the, of the president. I mean, it's just amazing. His, his chief of staff, two of his chief of staffs were, were absolutely against him and uh, many other senior people. And, and he makes the, the, the comment in the, in the book, there were only three people of the original picks by Donald Trump that survived to the end of his term. Pence. It's a, it's a pity. Pence. It's a and, pity. It really is a pity. Yeah, Pence and Peter Navarro were two of the three uh, who survived the entire time. By so, the way, I joined you. Twitter banned me because I used the word the word slaughter in a figurative way. And although I said it was figurative and it was figurative, they still said, "I'm damned." So they damned. <laughs> <laughs> well, words have meaning. Yeah, I'm joining the best club in the universe. The damn people, the deplorable, the deplorables. Right. That's right. Uh, absolutely. So I'm telling um, you, James, uh, James, th those people should be slaughtered. I swear to you, Zuckerman and who, whoever is running the show on the top, should be slaughtered. I mean, it physically slaughtered. Because they are literally destroying America. When you destroy mm -hmm. the freedom of speech, you destroy everything. Yep. And they're Agreed. doing it. And they're doing it. Yeah, and they and they parade it around like it's a like it's uh well, you know, it's 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 their terms of service and blah blah blah. And it's like, no, it's it I, I think Facebook and Twitter and all these places should be governed like a public utility. Uh, they should be governed they like the internet, also things if like they this. Break the law. We should be able to sue them if they break the law, and they're breaking the law 24 hours a day. But right now, right now they have that section 230. Yes, I know. I know. Protects I know. protects them from being yeah. able to. They should remove that one. Mm -hmm. They should they remove. Trump was trying to do that, but the bureaucrats and the deep state stopped it from happening. Yeah, it's a with, some with some Republicans also. Yes, it's a fascinating book, and and I I have it on audio, and it, it, he's it's he he does he reads reads the book, but it's it's. Extremely enlightening, and uh, I don't get paid any commission or anything. I'm just suggesting that this would be a great book for people to read. And, and uh, uh, so I, I did a commentary recently on uh, working title was why when will Joe Biden never tell the truth and um, <laughs> Go the whole truth? And I sort of the, the started off with the story. Uh, for for ten months, the president didn't do anything about oil prices and the price of gasoline. Dan, you're breaking up. You're cutting off. Dan, are you still and, with us, my friend? Just, or are you still there? Ratings continued to fall. He was. He decided he was. I'm trying. We're gonna we're Ooh. gonna see if we can. Um... I just got a call Ma from our Mariam guest, is here. Mariam is here. and I'm going to see if our guest is with us. Mariam, can you can you hear us? Can you let's see here if she's in our uh, in our deal here? I I'll tell you this this Skype link stuff is just annoying to me. <laughs> you got to send Skype links and you got to do all these things and okay, no, it should be easy. It should be easy. It should be easy. You have five, six people and no problem at all. Uh, let's do this. Let's it go over easy. here I don't know. and see if... Uh, Miriam, can you hear me? I think there she is. Maybe. Maybe. I'm back. There I'm we are. 
IQ. I've got IQ. I've got Miriam, I believe. Uh, Miriam has a picture. That's it. I've just got a picture. Yeah, I just I, I I've got like a green screen background, and that's about it. There, Miriam, can you hear us, my friend? Can you hear us? I don't know if she can hear us. Apparently, she cannot hear us. No, maybe she can, and she can't answer. Well, maybe that too. <laughs> there we Hello. are. We've got you. How are you? Great. I thought that this was radio. It, it is radio and TV, so it's both. But we, we've got you, so so that's all that matters. I, I didn't get a – okay, can I um, – can you give me a moment to get on camera? Not I, a problem. Was, uh... Not a problem. Not a problem. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do this. We'll hang up on our end, and then you can just call the – Call the link back. So we'll uh, we'll do that. We've got Dan. We've got IQ. <laughs> and, uh, as we continue on here with technology, it's so fun. And uh, <laughs> Dan, are are you back with us? Can you hear us, my friend? I see I Dan. Hear me. There yeah, we are. Yeah, yeah. There we are. We've got you. We've got you. And uh, apparently, Miriam is going to get on camera here in just a few, and we will. Uh, Bring her back in to the mix here. And uh, <laughs> it's always an interesting, interesting day. And I I don't know. So, so IQ, you're banned on Twitter now. Is that? Yes, yes, for using the word slaughter. Let me see here if I can. Let's see. Go to Twitter, and I'll see if I can pull up. Well, see, I'm shocked that you haven't been banned from Twitter before this. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I am. I am very shocked that you uh, that that you survived this long. No, I'll tell you why. I was attacking <laughs> Ilhan Omar, that piece of garbage, the anti-American, the anti-Jew, the anti-Constitution, pretending that she is a victim. Muslims are never victims. In 1,400 years of history, you will never find a case where the Muslims were victims. Never. They were always the aggressors. And they still are. Well, according to Twitter, you're still there. You probably are in, like, Twitter jail or something. Okay. <laughs> so what is Twitter jail? Uh, basically, what will happen is they won't let you post on Twitter for, like... 30 days or 15 days ah, or something. Oh, okay. So when will I know? Can uh, you tell me? I, usually, I've, I've never been in Twitter jail, so I do not know. Wait, 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 wait. Mariam is here. Mariam is with us. Have, Mariam, have you ever been in Twitter jail? Can, can you explain Twitter jail to IQ? Yes, that is when you've been a bad... <laughs> man or woman or they or them or whoever <laughs> and uh it can range from 24 hours to a week a week wow. and uh like lucky me only a week wow <laughs> well, i've been deleted now permanently so i'm i'm incognito as a backup so I'm I'm B Lady Seventeen. So I'm just going to ask your audience if they want to support my abusive relationship with Twitter. So please follow me. I'm B Lady Seventeen. <laughs> you know, I, I I just Miriam, I love you. I am so glad you are with us today. Uh, she is. <laughs> You you are so fantastic, and uh, Miriam joins us today here on Skype, and uh, for the television viewers, uh, you can get uh, live video at our website, JiggyJaguar.com, if you're listening to us on the radio, on iHeartRadio, or on 50-plus AM FM stations. Thank you. Um, so, Miriam, what is the latest goings-on with you? Because you are you are so busy all the time. Thank you for asking and thank you for having me on. I just um, had the honor to be published on Baxter and wrote a piece called um, Welcome to a Whole New Wicked Universe about Astro World and Graphene Oxide. And that was because they killed me 
um, I'll, I can get into that on Twitter for a tweet that I posted because I like to tell people I'm in the future. I'm a visionary. And I, I stated in March, March 3rd, 2020, that Wuhan was a test 5G city and that Charles Lieber was implicated and that something, the word that God gave me was parlaying, the vaccine was parlaying with the Internet of Things. And uh, I used the word theorized and think, but it's a thought crime. And so I, I saw, I was watching Stu Peters and I'm like, ah, I told you guys this last year. So I went <laughs> to retweet it and I said, you shamed me for this. You'll see graphene oxide is the secret sauce. Where are you, Charles Lieber? And then 10 minutes later, they killed me on Twitter. And so I said, oh, yeah, I'm going to become an expert on graphene oxide mofos. So I just got that published. I am helping organize a protest outside of a Miami federal center for the Grenon family of Genesis Church. They are behind chlorine dioxide, and they were implicated as part of an operation called Quack Hack. That's the actual name of the FDA, FTC, DOJ operation. And they came after me too, my transgression using the word prevention and selling vitamins and truth and selling silver. So I interviewed Mark Grenon in March or April. And then they arrested the boys, his sons, he has eight children. Two of the children were in Miami and they have been languishing in a federal prison without due process for crimes wow. they did not commit, drinking uh, tap water, contaminated tap water. I've interviewed Aaron Brockovich. I know the water quality in this country and uh, eating highly processed foods not seeing the sun, no sun, not going outside. And that will be on December 19th to try to get justice because we are glorifying crooks while putting innocent good people behind bars. I'm yes. also writing a uh, what's become colossal detox guide for the uh, jabs from hell and... Uh, so I'm in the midst of doing that. I've escaped from China, Fornia, and I'm in Florida. So I'm also looking for a home. And last but certainly not least, I am working on a book and a documentary on what really happened in the George Floyd incident. And I really want to clear my, my plate because all I want to do is, is go back. I am obsessed and... When I tell people that I arguably know more than anyone else about this incident, I know that sign sounds highfalutin and arrogant, but it's true, and I've been told that I need protection. I think since we last spoke, they've now closed my Chase bank account, Chase J.P. Morgan Vanguard Rothschild, and to tell your audience that Chase invested $30 billion, with a B, to eradicate racism by giving loans to minorities. Well, last I checked, I'm brown, and my mm. brown life doesn't seem to matter because they closed my bank account and w did not give me a reason. And since organizing this prison protest, uh, last week I got a strike on my second YouTube channel for a segment from the mainstream media without any commentary other than to say, is the MSM lying about chlorine dioxide? And then the same day, I'm now limited on Telegram. I think I just got out of their prison. So anyone who thinks that Telegram doesn't have censorship, I've been saying for months and months because they won't let me get above 4,000, and the same day Mark Grenon also got limited, because I want to make the distinction, he's in Colombia, but they know there that it's a complete joke. The government pays the Colombian government $20,000 per prisoner, so they have 
more lax conditions than in the United States of America because they know this is a joke and there are many paths to Rome. And meanwhile, we are witnessing a silent but blatant culling because people are dying because of this jab, but there's also saline being given. So they're staggering their deaths and it's called the advocate method. So thank you for that intro. That That's what I'm working on. Right well, now. Mariam, I'm surprised you're still alive. You have so yeah, many enemies, so, I'm surprised you're still alive. I'm, well, I'm <laughs> digitally assassinated. They've assassinated me. And uh, I, I have to be honest that I am, I've been pretty bold because I'm just speaking the truth. And so I don't think, you know, anyone, if you've entered me, Jiggy, you know, I kind of, I'm, I'm very open. But yeah, uh, let's, let's hope. I need protection. I, I've been told I've come across an FBI operation in regards to George Floyd. And I want to tell your audience, too, that I just redid my uh, my trailer. I'm trying to raise funds because I am determined to get the truth out. And Derek is now filing an appeal. And his attorneys don't want when they saw the trailer they told me i sent them the trailer and they said oh we want to see the rest of it and i'm like i want to see the rest of it too <laughs> but i need money to be able to pay a editor i think that i have found an editor and um i really want to i don't know why i'm obsessed with the george floyd case certainly there's lots of false flags and psyops out there but i have really invested thousands of hours applied for foia and it's a, it's a very interesting story, and I'm just presenting the facts, but I know more than the attorneys. What does that tell you? It tells you you have no justice system. We were discussing that before you came. Yeah. Yes, you, have zero, you have zero justice system in America. Where are you? I come from Middle East. I am living in Europe at the moment. Okay, yes, I know you're from the Middle East, being uh, Anna Masreya. So I can tell your accent, and we've spoken before. Um, yeah, I don't know if it's better in Europe. I mean, I'm in Florida, and I'm still, if possible, thinking, should I go to Mexico? Should I go to uh, back to Costa Rica? No, don't go to Mexico. They'll kill you there. Why would they kill me? Because what are you doing? Oh, that's true. I am kind of outing the Sinaloa. Anyway, you go to Mexico, they have the best people to kill you. The easiest and the cheapest. The that's easiest true, and the cheapest. <laughs> no, I want you to think about it. Seriously. I want you to be alive. I don't want you to be dead. But how about Costa Rica? No, Costa Rica is a different story. Mexico yeah, is another you know, story. It's good that you told me that because I have a friend that's going to Mexico, but I am basically behind the George Floyd incident is the Sinaloa cartel. And so the cartel runs Mexico. So maybe that's, thank you for, thank you. Uh, no no, problem. Note to self, Mexico is not a problem. <laughs> Mexico's not an option. <laughs> right. So, so Miriam, you have got uh, some amazing content on your BitChute channel. I've also uh, seen that you have you have been doing all sorts of interviews and talking to all sorts of different people. What what has been some of the biggest stories? Like like for instance, this uh, this Pfizer vaccine. Uh, they want to start giving this to children, which I think is just evil. Well, I think they've started right, and I I was like. You know, saying now jabbing all children ages five to eleven in aisle six six six. <laughs> so I I I spied on a on a webinar. The wait is over. <laughs> That's what it was called. The wait is over, and uh, was doing screen grabs. And my question, because I was one of the first to break even though Alex Jones, two weeks after I said it, broke the story. Um, Vagabond, um, Ryan had, had uh, caught my tweet 
and ha helped me go viral because I really am suppressed. And uh, so I was doing a title on my backup Twitter, Tris is for kids. And I thought, oh, Trix is for kids. It's just an accident. And they were pu putting tromethamine, which is a acid buffer. It's to help prevent ward off heart attacks. And if you've seen the moronic variant now has added heart conditions as part of the cause a part of the result of getting the Omicron, which there's no even test. How do people know? I've got Delta, I've got Omicron, uh, which which you must know by now was a 1963 Italian movie. And I found another <laughs> clip talking about uh, UFO, the Omicron and the Delta. I mean, we're living in the Truman Show. It's, it's, it's a joke. There's another article that came out in the Daily Mail yesterday saying that in some rare instances, the blood platelets are acting like magnets. Like instead of being honest that there's graphene oxide is the secret sauce, now our blood black platelets are, are magnetizing and causing the clots. Like who's buying this crap? Lots of people. Yes. Yes. A lot, a lot of people. We are going to... Go to Josh Bernstein. He is going to join us here for the second half of our program here with Miriam. And um, you can donate to the upcoming George Floyd book and documentary, givesendgo.com slash Miriam Heen. Uh, we're going to have a Thank link. You, we're going to have a link to it on our website at JiggyJaguar.com. I really, really appreciate that because it's we, the people, they can jostle the algorithms. I tell people you know, in her six-week lifespan, a honeybee will only produce a quarter of a teaspoon of honey. So if you think that your contribution doesn't matter in life, just consider when you look at a jar of honey, how much collaboration goes in to produce this beautiful nectar. And really, I, I am so grateful for people like you that allow me to speak and share and... Uh, I'm just really saddened that we've come to this place in the world. And unfortunately, it's going to get worse before it gets even yes. more worse. Well, one of, one of the things, Miriam, that we were discussing last week with Josh and Dan and IQ was the, uh, the pharmaceutical industry is just out of control when it comes to profits and some of the different things that they're doing. Uh I think it's 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 kind of interesting that conservatives and progressives are finally starting to get to the point where they agree on the how much the pharmaceutical industry just needs to be reined in. What 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 do you think about this, Miriam, with with the way that things have been going? Well, what comes to mind? Well, first off, if uh you know, the beginnings of Rockefeller medicine and its ties to petroleum and the, th this is not new threatening remedies. There's many different paths to Rome to get your body healthy. And I'm also a functional medicine consultant and coach through the Institute of Functional Medicine. I've reversed lupus and fibro. I've been hit by an SUV and dragged 50 feet. So clearly they don't want like, oh, I'm four years old, folks. I've reversed an autoimmune condition and I'm intelligent. So I'm, you know, who is this chick that she's so censored? Well, so it's disgusting when you find out that our, our food is adulterated, are you going to really think that they give a crap about you? And, yeah, give me whatever the hell's in this jam. No thanks. No thank you. So our people are waking up. I'm kind of disappointed that in this past week, two weeks, that um, Trump is saying that he's got the jab. I've met conservatives that have gotten the vaccine. If you go on dating apps now, it's, it's like you get a little, you can choose a little like, I'm vaccinated, or he actually says fully vaccinated. Swipe left, ciao, don't want to have anything to do with you. So in a way, it's a good litmus test because I don't, I'm not interested in, in vaccinated sperm or anything vaccinated. I've, I've experienced 
Um, I've experienced shedding. Uh, I know it sounds crazy outrageous, but this is, as you know, a pandemic of the vaccinated, and we live in a completely topsy-turvy, inverted world where everything is hidden in plain sight. Yes. And those of us that are discerning and that realize that the devil lies in the details and can tell, like I was on a show and the host said, anybody could be a journalist. I'm sorry, no, not everybody could be a journalist. And sure, you if you if you're care about details and you know how to discern and you're cross-referencing and you're just, but there's a, we're living in an age of mediocrity. Anyway, that's, Thanks for letting me go on my rant. No, no you're that's, good, uh, Miriam. You, that, you... That's what, uh, to answer your question, are people waking up? I mean, this is not this is not new. I know people who've been threatened. I mean, I, I've been threatened. I know people who are dead. Erin um, Elizabeth has written extensively about all the doctors who've mm-hmm. suicided, whether it's Dr. Bradstreet. There's no shortage. And I interviewed... Uh... Yes. Uh, Brandy Vaughn. Twice. She really? was on my show. I believe they killed her last year, December 12th, 2020. When did Murdered in her own home in front of her seven year old. Oh, yeah. They definitely. She knew she was. She was starting to feel it. Yeah. Yes. Yes. She was feeling it. She did many videos. She had her house broken into. Yep. Uh, core, uh, core. What's her name? K O I R E. She also was likely killed. Excuse me, Dr. Judy's. I'm not. I don't know if Dr. Judy's husband. Not saying anything, but he he just passed away. Uh, it, it's scary. Mikovits, is that what you're talking about? Yes. Oh boy. Yeah. Condolences to Dr. Judy's husband, and um, you know. D- Death is a part of life, but they've hijacked our lives. And uh, I really, I really think like I was talking about depopulation as early as 2013, and it wasn't time to speak out about that publicly. Well, now I want to go on record that I think that we are already overtaken by aliens. I don't think that this is human, and it's not just psychopaths, sociopaths, uh, flaming narcissists. This is not humane. There is a culling going on. What do you guys think about that? If I've, if, you know, you, what, if what someone told us the aliens have already landed, like in District 9, the movie. What do you think about this, Josh? Well, look, if I told you that you could go to your favorite concert, And there was going to be exactly 42,086 people at that concert. But after the concert was over, 1,223 of you would never come back alive. Would you go to that concert? If it's called Astro World? No. Of course not. Well, that is the odds, 1 in 35, of you surviving a Pfizer shot. Now, we know this information because of the FOIA request, the Freedom of Information Act request, that thankfully the judge did not put off for 55 years as the FDA and Pfizer wanted them to. Uh, 1,200 pages of the initial drop have already come out. I reported on it. And if you look at the data in that, and again, this is the first 90 days, December 1st, 2020 to to, uh, February 28th, 2021, just 90 days on the nose. And you had 1,223 people die, and you had 42,086 injured. Now, there was a section detailed in that information that had another number that said 11,361. And next to that, it said uh, no determinative outcome at time of this report. In other words, they were injured. There was a problem that was reported. But yet, there was no determinative outcome yet. So I said on my show, let's just be fair. Let's just be, you know, generous. Yeah. And let's say that 75% of those people lived, and only 25% of that 11,361 died. Add that number to the 1,223. Now you have over 4,000 people from the study of 42,086 that were injured. Now you're looking at a 1 in 11 odds 
of being injured or killed, actually being killed, not injured, being killed by the first 90 days worth of data on the Pfizer shot alone. Now, this is not Moderna. This is not Johnson & Johnson. This is just Pfizer alone. Right. Right. And what we need that, to do is we need to repeal the 1986 yes. law yes. that allows them to have carte blanche uh, immunity yes. from criminal and civil liabilities for the people they are injuring and killing on a daily basis. Well said. Uh, Josh, where, where can I see that release of the FOIA? Um, Josh send Bernstein, me a link? JoshBernsteinUncensored.com U-N-C-E-N-S-O-R-E-D. Please become a subscriber uh, to the website. Um, yeah, I'm one of the most censored investigative journalists in the country. Uh, yeah. I was on Amazon, Amazon Prime. I had a Roku television show all over social media, millions of views. And two weeks before the election, October 2020, yeah. I was uh, showing votes being flipped live on television, right. on yeah. CNN. And I was showing what was going to happen two weeks later. And from that point, uh, they ghosted me. They took me off of everything. So now I have my website. And again, it's Josh Bernstein, uncensored.com, U-N-C-E-N-S-O-R-E-D.com. And, uh, say say you know, it slower, please. Say it again. Sure. J-O-S-H yep. for Josh Bernstein, B-E-R-N-S-T-E-I-N. Yeah. Uncensored, U N C E N S O R E D dot com. I want. So, I yeah, want to add. I'm a subscriber there. Yeah, I will. I will come. I. I am also. You know, I made a film, Vanishing of the Bees, but I, I say Vanishing of the Investigative Journalists, and maybe you can. They co-opt my stuff. Um, they steal my work. And they. I feel like just like. They stole Dr. Judy's research that yeah. when they deleted my Twitter account, and usually I did backups, but I was moving, I had surgery, I didn't do a backup, that I was, you know, every single day before anyone knew this Rona was going to be what it was, I called it the virus that didn't cry wolf, that I was categorizing, and this is my research. They have taken my research, and for someone to be like, just get over it, don't be a victim. I want my effing research back. I want it back. It's mine. And I've been canceled many places to an unpersoned. I'm canceled on Amazon. They had, they had canceled me on Amazon, and they took all my books that I, I'm always reading several different books at a time. And I bitched, and I got a lawyer, and then they reinstituted me. And then mm. they just delete. They just canceled me again, and they can't let me keep my books. So that shows me that it's conscience. Yeah. To say no, uh, I'm bad on it. Sure. <laughs> yeah. The truth. It's the new hate speech. Can you read the rest of it? During the times of universal deceit, telling the truth becomes a revolutionary act, according to George Orwell. Those are for live our, our, that. our radio yeah. listeners. I'd love to have that uh, again. Where Where are you based, Josh? He's um, in Arizona, of all places. You don't want to say? Yeah, I'm based in the Southwest, and yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I I I am concerned for for my. Are you city. in Hawaii? Is that what I see in the background? <laughs> no, that's Costa Rica. <laughs> oh, you're in Costa Rica. Let me. Let me just disappear into the jungle. Um, no, You're I'm in just... Florida. Oh, Florida. Uh, I'm in Florida. I escaped China, Fornia, um, a little bit, like two months ago, but I don't have a home yet. I'm staying in an undisclosed location for now, and I didn't... The day I became a second-class citizen in San Francisco, I bought... San Francisco. So sick, so disgusting... Oh, I saw my daily crack user today. Um, just BLM everywhere. They love their face diapers outside. I, mm -hmm. I, I refuse to wear. So here is is more, is the freest I think state in the country. I don't know if they're rounding up the deplorables and the dissidents. And uh, I'm I'm going to be going back to Miami, but I know God told me to leave. 
leave um, as early as 2013, and I thought it was going to be because of an earthquake in in California. And so I'm I'm looking to well, we've because of this show now um, was the IQ that I'm I'm not going to Mexico. And uh, yeah, I, I I she was originally going to go to Mexico, and IQ talked her out of it. Yeah, well, yeah, well, good job, uh, IQ. Yeah. <laughs> it was just actually a consideration because really, I I want to go back to Costa Rica, and uh, I know where to hide, and I want to wake up with the butterflies and the insects. But I'm looking for a chaperone, and someone's like, "Oh, do you need?" you need someone to bring a machete in the jungle and like i just need to get to the jungle i will be your resource i've been going there for years i'm just concerned about navigating the matrix i recently got kicked off of a flight it was american because of a shaniqua it had nothing to do with me pushing back on the masks or pushing back on uh, anything to do with the rona regime and someone would say that's racist of me to say a Shaniqua, but this chick was just power tripping. I had a, a jacket and it did I'm um, in um, my seat I switched seats and it didn't belong to the person whose seat I was in, a Hugo Boss jacket. And I just simply wanted to return the jacket to its owner. It's almost like it, this was all meant to happen. So the stewardess comes towards me and I'm an empath, and I'm a mirror, and I, I'll meet you, you know, your energy, I'll reflect it back to you. And I'm also five foot five, and I, I have to be assertive. So she came to me, and I said, oh, this jacket doesn't belong to me. And she said, it probably belongs to the person whose seat this is in. And I said, uh, no, because I just switched seats. And she says, uh-uh, you're not going to talk to me that way. She flips around. And leaves, and I I just leaned over the man. Definitely a Shaniqua. <laughs> she was someone was reading. Um, the could have been a Lakeisha Kent. too. You never know. <laughs> could 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 have been a uh, what was it? Lakeisha. Lakeisha. <laughs> it's a horrible power tripping ego maniac. But I leaned over and I said, "I'm about to get kicked off the plane." They removed me off the plane, and I. I was like, screw my ego. I was going to the truth about cancer. And I got on my knees and I said, please do not ruin my entire day. And the woman, this was another woman, the woman who called me out, she disappeared, never to be seen again. This other woman goes, get off the floor. Why? You're making me feel uncomfortable. Can you believe it? Yes, anyway, unfortunately. Anyway, all this to say, I they put me on a different flight. Had I done anything really wrong, what you can't speak back to people anymore? I come back. No, you can't. Sorry. No, you can't. You're in America. <laughs> I I came back hours later, and I was like, "What? Are, how am I going to navigate this?" So I went up to the counter and I said, "I've been a bad girl, and I've been told that I need to have a discussion about compliance." And I was masked and wearing a hat. You can't see. Who am I? You can't even see. It. But because I cracked a joke, she said, I suggest that you get on the plane, keep your mask on. They literally put me in the back of the bus, like the last seat next to the shitter, and uh, which I changed because there were no Shaniqua, the 10. But all this to say this, they told me, we are going to start sharing, American Airlines is going to start sharing their data with the FAA. And, and if you get banned on one airline, you will never fly again. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> jo Josh, I need your advice. When I get Sorry. to New York, when I get my green card, how can I get a gun? <laughs> um. First thing, I must have a gun. I would not I would live in say, America without a gun. You've got to be armed in America. Yeah, Definitely. you do. Um, I would say the best way to do it would probably be to get a P.O. box and an address, mail address or something in New Jersey, because New Jersey is a little bit less you know, stringent than New York. Um, you could try doing that. You could... Uh, 
probably go to like West Virginia, which has very laxed gun laws as well. It's a little further away, of course, but uh, New York is is pretty much almost impossible to get firearms in. Okay, I'll go to West Virginia. Are you, West Virginia are you coming to the you being, you, you, I have you a being green card. I am coming legitimately. Why don't you just and cross the border illegally like everybody else? If any bastard comes against me I'll shoot him <laughs> dead. Sorry, Seriously. Josh, I didn't hear you. He just I said, wants... why don't you just cross the border illegally like everybody else? Yeah. Yes, I know. I was told exactly the same thing by my lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> and she's an American Why am I lawyer. Not surprised, she like, said it would be cheaper for you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Imagine that. It costs you a fortune to do it the right way. Correct. But I tell you what, it gives me infinite power against anybody who comes against me. Physical, mental, political, or religious. I don't care. I'll wipe the floors with them. There you go. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm Honestly, James, I'm worried about myself, I swear to you. I'm, a, I'm a, in a, on a war path, literally, I'm on a war path. Anybody who will aggravate me, I'll blow them up. <laughs> Anybody who aggravates you, you'll blow See, them up. See, we need more people like IQ in the world, not less. Josh, we need more people like you also, and more people <laughs> like Mariam. And more like people like James. Well, we no, need no, no like one us, needs more people me. like me. We I, are I, the only I, I'll, sane I'll ones. Do. Literally. I know it sounds stupid, but it isn't stupid. We are the only sane ones. James, you ought to give him, a, give him an, an address. Have him send some mail or something to you. Let him establish residency, quote unquote, uh, and then get an ID in Kansas. And then, you know, he can, uh, he can get a gun. There's got to be a way to I'll do get a gun. it. I'll get a gun. One way or another, I'll get a gun. Good. I'd like to get a gun, too. Um, you really should. Got many of them. <laughs> you should. Well, I'm in Florida. Uh, Florida's a good state for guns. It's easy Actually, to get guns there. What, what, what do you all think about uh, Costa, going to Costa Rica as opposed to staying in Florida? I could tell you... That the market here. I would become... go to Costa Rica if 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 I had the chance, I'd go to Costa Rica. <laughs> right, Costa Rica is very nice. Bloody hell, horseback riding on the white sandy beaches. I mean, you know. Yeah, I I uh, I have uh, my landlady, but the place is only going to be ready in March. Everything has become um, crazy everywhere, and I've been applying and doing my paperwork for residencia. <laughs> For, for a year now, so I still have a little bit of... I, I'm, I'm legitimately looking for a chaperone, and I, I would, if, if the price is, if I can afford it, um, pay for the ticket to have them just... I want, like, a, a male chaperone to just make sure I get there safely and I don't get jabbed or nostril raped or... Uh, Bloody hell. <laughs> well, that's what it is, you know, and yes, they announced, yes, yes. I spy on Lester Holt. This, this is why you day. should be armed, I'm telling you. Well, don't I don't know in an airport if they you can be armed. I mean, No, not in the airport, for God's sake, they'll, they'll yeah, take you okay, off. Yeah, okay, so I'm not, once I get there, I'm fine. Like I said, it's navigating the matrix, and uh, I know um, my girlfriend is in Bali, and she knows someone that got forced vaccinated in the airports in between and they've announced um, i think it's january like even in between if you're traveling within europe for instance like if you go if you make a stop to paris and you spend 24 hours then they need to see a pcr test within 24 wow. hours in america you, you know that depends right? on where you, you fly see, into no I mean, it used to be three days and now it's one day what do, you, what do you mean, Josh? It depends where. Well, doesn't it depend where in America, what airport you're flying into? I can't imagine it being a federal law through the airports where they force vaccinate you or, or try to, you know, uh, want to see your vaccine card as you're flying in. Maybe at certain spots around the world. I don't know. I'm talking about the test to go get back into the get back into the states i mean there's a reality that if i leave i, I will not be able to come back again because i'm, I'm not getting a jab yeah. i don't care how many 
blowjobs or donuts or lottery tickets <laughs> waved in front of me, I'm not getting the jab. <laughs> You know, because in Germany, it's like blowjobs for boosters. Yes, yes. They're doing all sorts of things. They're trying to, trying to, uh, try, well, and the one thing I think is funny is they want to pay. So, so some of these certain places in the United States want to pay people, but they don't want to pay them any real money. They want to pay them like a hundred bucks, 200 bucks. You know, if, if you really right, so want. Gret, so Greta Thorn, Thornburg. Gets on her knees and uh, services somebody to, so they can get a booster shot. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, boy. So, well, Miriam. Austria, right? They were g- g- at the whorehouses. I believe so. Were, yes, that's where they yeah. were doing it. They were giving they're, out. They're building gulags in Germany. They're building concentration. My business partner and ex is in Austria and... Uh, he just got a gun. He had to do, um, I think, I think take a 700, quest, 700 question test to get a, like, to look at your psychological, if you're balanced, to get a gun. So he just got a gun and uh, he's now going to leave Austria. And I know it sounds pessimistic, but I think we're all just like, if I go to Costa Rica, I'm just, I'm buying time. I don't think where I have my eyes on, there's no military. And let's be honest, Costa Rica is very much in bed with China. The Chinese oh, are mining much so. there. Road initiatives. Say again? Probably from the Belt and Road Initiatives. Yeah. Yeah. Are you That's what China the- does. China right. goes into these countries that they know can't afford to repay their debts. They do debt trap diplomacy. And they go in there and they build hospitals and they build, you know, schools and they build bridges and roads and tunnels and all this stuff. And they have them sign documents stating that they'll pay them back once they start making profit. But, of course, they know that that's not going to happen. So then it's a way for China to come in and take over their governments. Right. And And they've been doing it for years. Yeah. Yeah. And they own lots. And, I mean, before I got into politics, I just... From a young age, it was like, oh, well, America was a superpower, and the next superpower will be China. And I, I didn't know half of the things I know now when, when that came to mind. And certainly, yeah, Costa Rica is not, uh, not an exception. Are you, are you familiar with Brendan O'Connell? Uh, I've heard the name. I'm not sure exactly who that is. He's an influencer. He's in Mexico, and he talks about the Belt and Road and uh, um, Israeli-China relations, geopolitics. Mm. So he, he's, uh, he's on the lam, can't come to the United States, has been imprisoned. Um, yeah, I mean, there's lots of uh, influencers like Dollar Vigilante, Max Egan is in Mexico. There's there's a lot of expat communities there. Yeah. I mean, I've thought about buying, getting a new identity. Mm-hmm. Really? I've thought about that for years, way before. Yeah, I have. Yep. I, mean, I can't. I'm a public figure. I got a Wikipedia site. So. You can't I have a Wikipedia site. I know. You I'd have to change. turn into Prince with the symbol, you know? <laughs> It'd be a giant middle finger that said government on it. That'd be my symbol. <laughs> That's, awesome. That's awesome. I mean, look, Josh, they, they terrorize people and they digitally assassinate, but they terrorize people in different ways. So I was speaking about this protest in front of the federal prison for the Grenon family that are responsible for bringing chlorine dioxide and giving it their church. So they went after the family that the family's imprisoned uh, with me. I don't have a family or, or uh, so they know that I want to use my throat chakra and uh, speak. And so they, they just, they tailor their terror depending, you know, there's Jason Goodman, let's say he does good work. They are suing him constantly. And, uh, but I was like busy trying to, I was playing whack-a-mole trying to save my health and uh, wellness magazine and marketplace. So I wasn't 
branding myself. And as soon as I got to 10,000 followers on YouTube, they killed me. Um, but I've been a journalist as well. I've been around for 25 years. I used to write for Maxim and Penthouse and The Hollywood Reporter and LA Magazine. I used to get paid $2 a word. Now it's like, please take this. Can you take my brilliant work? You mm. know, like actually giving it away just to get it out there. It's disgusting. And I say, like, oh, makeup artists, you get paid to put toxic shit on someone's face and yes. you get more money than me. <laughs> what? Yeah, really. Exactly. Yes. Well, this has been a very she's a, spirited... She's a feisty one there. She uh, is feisty. I love Miriam. She's great. <laughs> uh, if you want to support Miriam's uh, upcoming George Floyd book and documentary, go over to givesendgo.com. And uh, search Miriam Heen, which is Miriam H E Heen. It's Miriam H E N E I N, and uh, she is fantastic. And I love chatting with her each and every time we uh, we get a chance. She is a spitfire. And um, so, Josh, as we wrap up here today, what 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 did you think of the conversation here? Uh, very interesting. Um... You know, it's nice to see a, a female counterpart that tells it like it is, kind of like uh, myself. So, uh, Miriam, I wish you nothing but the best of luck. Um, one thing I hope you are going to include in your book on fentanyl Floyd uh, is going to be the fact that he asked – first off, he said that he couldn't breathe at least 10 times yep. before they even put him in the car. Yep. Then they put him in the car, and he's the one that asked them – to, to put, put him on, the, on the ground. They didn't put him on the ground. Right. He asked to be put on the ground. Yep. And that's when the cameras started rolling. Exactly. So I have the full video of the entire arrest from the very start till the very, very end. And it's yep. really sad that the American people only got to see the part where he was on the ground with uh, Chalvin's uh, knee near his neck and near his back. And again, he died of a fentanyl overdose. 11 nanograms of fentanyl, yeah. all you need is two or three, and you can kill a horse, never mind a human. So he had more than enough in his system to kill himself. And the coroner even said if he didn't die then, he would have went to bed that night right. and died in his sleep, or he would have been dead the following morning because yeah. he had a fatal fentanyl overdose. God bless you for getting the truth out. If there weren't any other... Um, if he didn't know any better and he didn't know other, he, he asked, Andrew Baker asked not to see that. He specifically did not see the video and is the only one that examined the body. Let's tell people Michael Baden and his black pathologist forensic. There's no official report. They never came out with the report. And exactly, Josh, that's what this, the film is to accompany, is to illustrate the book and to show this is what happened at 7.30 all the way to 9.30. Did you know Derek went to the hospital? Did you know Derek wasn't supposed to work that day? Did you know that that's not his Mercedes Benz? Did you know that Derek, uh, George, I'm sorry, George, that's not George's Benz. Did you know that George wasn't there to buy a pack of cigarettes that he doesn't smoke and a banana? So when George is holding the banana up and uh, you cut to some footage of Thomas Lane in the... I'll send you my trailer. Um, Thomas Lane is inside the, uh, I guess, E-17, the fire truck. And uh, she's like, so what happened? More drama at Cup Foods? And he's like, yeah, um, this guy, you know, went, uh, and then she cuts him off. She goes, went bananas. So when he's holding the banana and he went there to, to buy charcoal, and to buy things, because we was having a barbecue, according to the person who really owns that car. Um, I'm like, shit, Curious George. So I look up, you know, Curious George, and I told Zach at the time, he goes, that's racist, Miriam. It's not me. He's holding a banana. His name is George. So I look up <laughs> Curious George, and guess what? The last, the last book in the series is Curious George Goes to the Hospital. And Curious George swallows a puzzle piece. The truth, fake drugs made from Me in Mexico with the help of China. And he goes to the hospital and guess who he sees? A Dr. Baker. 
Just coincidence. Mm. Well, well, hey, if he didn't try to pass a fake check, uh, he'd still be alive, possibly, although the fentanyl would have got him in. Yep, the fentanyl well, got him. As we as we wrap up here, um, let's go to Josh Bernstein. Josh, how do we get in touch with you online, my friend? Josh Bernstein Uncensored dot com. Uh, if it's banned on social media, you'll find it there. If it's uh, something that you can't get on Facebook or Twitter or YouTube, that would be censored or taken down. You'll find it on my website, Josh Bernstein Uncensored dot com. Okay, I got people calling like crazy. Okay, l let's go to uh, IQ. IQ, how do we get in touch with you online, my friend? Just Google my name, Ezra Shuli, A L R A W S W O L I. By the way, Miriam. It's too fast. A L R A W S O L I. By the way, Miriam, you are the only one who has been able to keep Josh Bernstein's mouth shut during the whole day. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but because I, I would like That's to awesome. actually interview you, Josh, and... and uh, Go and interview talk. him, for God's sake. Interview him then. Yes. Oh, I, would like to. I would love to get you guys connected, and I will do that on email as so soon do as it, we uh, do it. wrap up the show here. Um, Miriam, before we, let, before we let you go, how do we get in touch with you and, and everywhere else? I'm sorry for, for monopolizing. No, 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 no. You're the guest. That's why we... It's not a comment. It's not a criticism. A no, comment. we love it, my friend. We love it. Um, yeah, well, just to be mindful, pe people can reach out to Mariam, M-A-R-Y-A-M, as in Mary, at honeycolony.com. Please buzz on over to honeycolony.com if uh, you want vitamins and truth. And uh, you can find me on Lady B on Gab and uh, B Lady 17 on Twitter. And yes, please, anything helps in regards to this book and this um, George Floyd documentary, which is a short. I'm only trying to raise $15,000, and that doesn't even cover my work, it's mostly to cover my expenses and to pay for an editor, which has been very difficult to find someone who's not a lefty cuckoo and also skilled. Thank well, you. Thanks, everybody. And uh, I will connect everybody as soon as the show's over with. And uh, Thank thanks, you, everybody. Katie. Thanks for doing this. Thank you, Miriam. Thank you, Josh. Thank you, IQ. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. that wraps it up here from our big broadcast. We have got to go. <laughs>